Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about Zenject, and I'll be giving you guys an introductory lesson into using Zenject in Unity. So if you don't already know, Zenject is a dependency injection system for Unity. You can pick it up on the Asset Store, just type in Zenject. So what dependency injection allows you to do is to create your classes and your model behaviors uh, depending on abstractions or interfaces rather than the concrete uh, implementation of those interfaces. So if you have a class and you say that you require an I greeting, so you need an object that, let's say, has a message attached to it, so a message property. You'll never need to go and in those model behaviors create that object manually by doing something like new greeting, where, where greeting was the concrete class which implements I greeting, but rather the Zinject system or the dependency injection system uh, allows itself to create that object for you and insert or inject that object wherever you need it. So if you, for instance, um, need only one game manager class, so you need one object that implements the iGame Manager, then you can basically bind that one instance of the concrete class to the interface and wherever that interface is referenced and has the inject keyword, it will automatically insert itself using this inject system. So to make that sound a little bit more concrete, we can take a look at this working example. And I have three classes here. Greeting consumer, which is a mono behavior, which injects a iGreeting object into the class. So this is a iGreeting interface. And if we take a look at that interface, you can see it has one property called message. So by referencing this interface, we can basically say, hey, any object that implements iGreeting will have a message, and therefore we can use any object that implements iGreeting here um, in order to log out that message to the console. Now that's pretty much standard, right? But the thing that Zinject is great at is we never need to tie the concrete class specifically to this greeting consumer class, but Zinject will fill in the concrete class wherever we need it. So we have the iGreeting interface, it's an abstraction, and then we have the concrete greeting class over here. So you can see it implements the message property, and the message property returns this variable over here, hello world. So we would expect that any time that we inject a iGreeting object with this greeting class, then the message that's going to be logged to the console would be hello world. Now, how does Zinject know to use the greeting class uh, wherever we require a I greeting? Well, that is where the installers and the contexts come into play. So there's a few different contexts you can use for your game. Uh, the first, if you want something to be the context for everything in your game, meaning you would bind a concrete object class to a interface and then wherever that interface is referenced across your entire game, then that concrete object will be used to inject. Um, so that would be a project context. So if we right click here and go to create a Zinject project context, it's a prefab that automatically loads when you're running your Unity scenes or your game. Um, and it will apply to every scene inside of your game. So we can put an installer here, which the installer tells uh, Zinject basically, hey, what concrete object are we going to use for the interfaces? So we'll probably bind it here in this project context just so that it applies to everything in the game. But another example of what you could do would be to right click on your scene, go to game object, Zinject, and do a scene context. So the difference here is the scene context, whatever bindings you make, only apply to that scene. So if you try to resolve an object inside of this scene. So maybe you have the greeting dependent mono behavior here, and that requires the I greeting class to be, or the I greeting interface to be injected with an object. Then, as long as it can find it in the scene context, or if it can't find it in the scene context, the project context, it'll be able to resolve that game object and put the concrete object where it needs to be. Um, so, to just point out though, if you have two uh, bindings to the same interface, uh, whatever the lower context is going to take precedence. So if you have it in project context, but you also have it set in scene context, the scene context will overwrite the project context, which you would expect.
Um, so let's see. In order to bind it, though, we're going to need to make an installer. So I have one uh, right here, ready to go. I guess it's simple enough. There's no real point to rewrite it. So let's just open it up. So you can see there is one method in here, which is overwritten from the installer class, I believe. And it is install bindings. So in install bindings, we reference a container object. Um, and I believe the container, it, it depends on wherever you're putting it to. So if you have it in the scene context, then the container is part of that scene context, I believe. Not 100% on that. But um, anyway, what you do is you can tell it to bind an interface, an abstraction, to a concrete object. And then you can tell it, is it a single object across your context? Or you could do this where you would say as transient where whenever an eye greeting needs to be injected it would create a new instance of this concrete class for every time you need to inject it uh, usually though i find that doing as single is uh, usually what i need so we'll just leave it at that for now so this means that wherever we resolve the eye greeting interface it's going to have a concrete object of which there is only one in our context, which is either the project context or the scene context. You can also do game object contexts if you want to get very specific. So there's one object which gets injected everywhere we need it, basically. So there's many little tricks to binding things here. For instance, another way you could do it is bind interfaces and self to, I believe you put the concrete object here, and then you could do as single. Now, uh, what this one would mean is that this greeting object is going to be a single object within the context, and any interfaces that that uh, concrete class implements are also going to be bound with this concrete class, um, basically all resolving to the concrete class as one single object. So if you have like one class that implements five interfaces, then you can basically tell it to bind all of those interfaces at one time by doing it this way. Um, obviously, that's not necessary here and a bit more complicated. So let's just get rid of that for now. So next, we need to take our mono installer and add it to the scene context or the project context. So there are three different types of installers here. If we were to create a new scriptable object installer, a mono installer, or an installer, uh, these are all scripts, but a scriptable object installer allows you to create an instance of that installer as a scriptable object, uh, good for doing things like settings. A mono installer is like a mono behavior script. You add it to a game object, and then, uh, for instance, I add it to the scene context as an additional script, and then the scene context itself can reference that script as the installer. And then installer down here is uh, an installer without direct context with it. Break. And then the third option, installer, is kind of independent of the Unity system. So it would just be an object that exists and you wouldn't directly attach it to anything within Unity. It's good for doing things like um, unit tests if you get into that later. So as you can see by clicking on the greeting installer, you can see that this was created uh, with the right click create mono installer. Um, which is a mono installer of the class greeting installer. So now all we need to do in order for the installer to be added and load with our scene to bind the interface to the concrete object is to take this, drag it in here, and now we add it to one of these lists up here. So the one that stands out to me as making sense is the installers list. So I put it in the scene context, though obviously we could add it in here as well to the project context. So let's see, greeting installer, and we could drag that up here. And it would work exactly the same way, except that the project context is for every scene in our entire game project, but the scene context is specific to that scene. So I'll just get rid of those settings there so that we're not having any confusion. So within this scene, the I greeting should bind to greeting. And then the greeting consumer is going to be injected with the concrete implementation of the iGreeting interface. And we're going to log the message to the console, which is only possible if we have a concrete object, because obviously the interface, it's just basically setting requirements. It doesn't have any message in itself. 
So I'm going to hit play here and we're going to take a look at the console and uh, that was from the testing earlier. So let's hit play and see if it still spits hello world to the console. Um, so waiting a second here and there we go. A bazillion hello world messages, just what we needed. So uh, obviously you can see that this is only possible if we have something setting the greeting object inside of the greeting consumer and that's what Zenject does. Um, so the greeting consumer mono behavior class doesn't need to know anything about the actual implementation of that object. It doesn't need to create a new object. It just gets injected by Zenject and Zenject basically manages all of those dependencies for us. So hopefully you guys get a decent grasp on this. I've been playing around with Zenject myself in the last few weeks. I found it to be pretty cool and a much better alternative to using, uh, let's say, singleton objects for all your class managers. Um, because as, as you can see, this decouples your concrete classes from each other. So as long as so if I was to completely remove the greeting class from this project, it wouldn't have any impact on this greeting consumer class itself. I would just need to supply any other class that implements iGreeting into the Zenject installer and the project would still work, which is really cool. Okay, so one last thing I want to point out before I go, and this is going to be the topic of the next video, is that if you dynamically create, and this should really say a game object here, rather than a mono behavior, if you dynamically create a game object, basically where you would do like game object dot instantiate, um, that won't actually work with Zenject doing it that way. So in the next video, we'll talk about how you can create uh, game objects in the scene, like when you spawn enemies and stuff like that. Um, by using a factory where Zenject will still be able to work with that factory and add in the dependencies as it creates the game object in your scene. So it still fully works with mono behaviors. It, you'll just have to get out of the habit of doing uh, this, where you instantiate, I, I don't know, a let's say a new greeting consumer or something like that. But rather it'll be more like greeting consumer dot factory dot create and that'll create the game objects wherever you need them but with zinject injecting all of the dependencies so that's gonna be it for this video uh thanks for watching i hope you guys got something out of this and i will see you guys in my future unity content